Good morning and welcome to worship at Bethany Presbyterian Church. We're glad that you've decided to tune in this morning and spend some time gathering in worship. If this is your first time with us, just a couple of um, additional bits of information. Usually Natalia begins playing gathering music around 1020. And then as you saw, we have a prelude at about 1030. So you can tune in and hear that lovely music. We also uh, always have a copy of the sermon, at least, but often the whole service, that is on our webpage that you can view as an uploaded YouTube video. And those are usually available later on the same Sunday that the service happened. You can find this information on our webpage at bethprez.com. Immediately following this Facebook Live service is we do have a Zoom service. It's about at 11.10, and there's a link on our webpage, uh, again, at BethPrez.com, that you can find that. We also have a Tuesday, 11 a.m. Bible study that's through Zoom, and then also a Wednesday, 11 o'clock Zoom check-in. You're welcome to join us. In fact, I'd encourage you to please, if you haven't joined us before, um, get those on your calendars and come and check it out. I know that I attend a lot of meetings with our presbytery and read a lot of things online and 
Um, as the pandemic continues, one of the best things we can be doing because we can't gather together is to find different ways to check in with each other. So you're encouraged to check in and Zoom with us. It's not perfect, but it's a marvelous technology that we can at least uh, see one another's faces and hear what's new in our lives. Also, please note that next Sunday is uh, World Communion Sunday. It's almost always the first Sunday of uh, October, and so we're going to do a few special things for that. Uh, it's a great day, and we'll be having communion together. So have your juice or wine available at home and some bread, and we will be celebrating the Lord's Supper together. So as we begin our worship, let us begin with prayer. God of mountaintops, the din of the world can harden our hearts to your word. We watch news, reality TV, sitcoms, yet have trouble bearing witness to your presence in our lives. Our faith is placed in those who fail us. Our trust is given to those who misplace it. Forgive us, God of mystery. You offer mercy and hope to us that we might hear your call to discipleship. You whisper our names that we might know how loved we are. Caught by the surprise of your never-ending love for us, how can we not follow our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, onto the mountaintops of worship and into the valleys of sacrifice and service? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And as we also continue, we remember... Our baptisms, whether they happen when we were young or at an older age, that time when we were brought in onto the Christian journey with God and with one another, trusting that God is holding us in the palm of God's hand and that God longs only for good things and abundance for our lives. I now invite you to Pass the peace with one another. Um, say hello via our Facebook wall. If there's someone new, be sure to greet them and maybe make a new friend. And the peace of Christ be with you all. Our scripture today comes from the book of Ephesians. It's from chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. Listen to what God's Spirit is saying to the church this day. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thank you, Natalia. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you such thanks for the gift of your word. And as always, we trust that your spirit would move in our hearts so that we may find that encouraging, hopeful word this day, even in the midst of a pandemic when we are not able to be physically together. We know you are with us. In Jesus' name, amen. There was a pastor working some years ago in China. He was under house arrest when soldiers suddenly came to his house one day and said, you can return to America. As the pastor and his wife and his kids were celebrating, the soldiers said, you can take 200 pounds with you. Well, the pastor and his family had been in China for several years. They got out the scales and began arguing about what to take. The new typewriter, an antique vase, books, clothes, souvenirs. They weighed everything, putting each item on the scales, taking them off, then putting them on in various combinations. Finally, they got their configuration correct And they got it right on the dot, 200 pounds exactly. Shortly after, a soldier asked them, are you ready to go? Yes. Did you weigh everything? Yes. Did you weigh your kids? No. Weigh the kids. In that moment, the typewriter, the vase, and every other item became insignificant trash. This story is a lesson on perspective. And in these frightening days of COVID, political strife, and climate catastrophes, it's really easy to lose perspective. The issues we face in our personal lives, as well as these massive problems I've just mentioned, are serious. But even so, they are still manageable. Most of us still have our health, our strength, our daily bread, not to mention a home, people who care about us, in a society that functions relatively smoothly despite all of the political dysfunction. Because of the endless news cycle, what we think is really pressing really doesn't mean that much in the grand scheme of things. Perspective is what keeps us grounded and allows us to prioritize what's truly significant in life. Perspective involves gratitude for what really matters in our lives, as well as the ability not to sweat the small stuff. If a child has perspective, a tantrum won't be thrown over a lost toy. If a teenager has perspective, a breakup isn't the end of the world. And if an adult has perspective, a lost job isn't a failure. Change, losses, and disappointments become manageable when we have perspective. Today's text from Ephesians is a blessing for all the things that God has done for believers, and it gives us tremendous perspective. It's really full of good news. This blessing moves from faith and love towards hope, showering the reader with these life-giving truths. Early on, Paul offers his thanks for these believers, and we learn that he is encouraged by them. Paul was in prison when he wrote this letter, so he was certainly in need of encouragement, but he was still giving thanks Talk about perspective. Paul notes that we believers are on a faith journey. There are going to be a lot of ups and a lot of downs, but we still keep moving forward. We're on the way to fuller understanding, but we just haven't arrived yet. We're to trust the process, to trust one another, and to trust God. God's got this. As we journey along the smooth roads, as well as through scary wilderness, we need to keep some important things in mind. 
First, Christ is at God's right hand. And thus, God and Christ are with us wherever we are. Second, Christ is above all other ruling powers, rulers, and authorities. We are no longer, in any ultimate sense of the word, under their control, whether they be or earthly powers. We're freed from them, be they governments, armies, or even a terrible boss, and thus freed for love of God and neighbor. This text pulls out all the stops as it depicts the heavenly status of Christ. Christ breaks every spatial barrier that we, we can imagine and every temporal barrier as well. Verse 21 states, not only in this age, but in the age to come. So Paul speaks in the present tense of Christ's rule as an accomplished fact. Therefore, we learn that Christ is the one who is bringing all of us and all of creation under his care. This vision incorporates all people and the inheritance we all have in Christ. So we're showered with Christ's blessings, which replaces our anxiety and fear. Conflicts and fear lose their significance when Christ becomes the all in all. When I was growing up, my family celebrated what we called party night on Fridays. Our dear friends, the Cashings, joined us at our place for pizza, and we kids played throughout the neighborhood. Meanwhile, our parents were at the table and spent the night playing a card game called 500. Have any of you heard of this game or played it? If so, you have a partner in me. It's a lot like hearts or spades or euchre. You have a partner and you're trying to take tricks. Bids are made and then a trump suit is determined. Trump cards are the power cards. Trump card can be played and they override the power of other suits. It's a very good thing to have a handful of trump cards. Today's text reminds us that we have a pocket full, or rather a life full, of trump cards wherever we go. Today's text is proclaiming our trump cards. This great prayer in Ephesians reminds us that an inheritance is grand, much more than individual riches or even a beautiful heaven that awaits. It's the gift of being adopted as God's own joined to Christ's body to journey alongside one another in the way of Jesus Christ. I'm not trying to gloss over the many problems that we face as a nation or in our own personal lives. But these comforting words declare to us that even in the midst of the chaos and daily struggles, the bottom line of our existence is that God is in control and we belong to God. The next time the news seems too depressing or your life seems as though it's spiraling out of control, remember to put it into perspective. These trump cards from Ephesians should help. Hallelujah. Amen. Friends, I want us to be thankful for all that we've been giving to keep that perspective And to then even know that we've been called to try to share what we have, our time, our talent, our treasure. So I invite you now to prayerfully consider what you can give to this greater community to help make um, the gift of love more present all around us. And as always, a reminder that we do have a give button on our webpage at bethprez.com so you can give without even having to get up from your chair. As we conclude this portion of our service, again, you're reminded to join us via Zoom about 11.10 today. I want to close with a benediction from Stephen Charleston, or rather it's a prayer I found online, but I want to introduce it as a new benediction. It says this, Now is the moment for which a lifetime of faith has prepared you. All of those years of prayer and study, 
all of the worship services, all of the time devoted to a community of faith, it all comes down to this. This sorrowful moment when life seems chaotic and the anarchy of fear haunts the thin borders of reason. Your faith has prepared you for this. It has given you the tools you need to respond, to proclaim justice while standing for peace. Long ago, the Spirit called you to commit your life to faith. Now you know why. You are a source of strength for those who do not have hope. You are a voice of calm in the midst of chaos. You are a steady light in the days of darkness. A time has come to be what you believe. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the power and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and ever after. Hallelujah. Amen.